Okay, how and why of defrost in heat pumps. Now I've said earlier in this series that uh, because the outdoor coil is now an evaporator in a heat pump when you're in the heating mode, you are going to be bringing down the temperature of air crossing the coil because you're absorbing heat from it. In some cases, depending on what the humidity is, you will condense water on the coil. And if the temperature of the coil is below freezing, it's going to condense as ice. Now, it's 40 degrees outside. Could I have ice on the coil? Absolutely. Because the coil is colder than the outside air. It has to be colder than the outside air in order to absorb heat from the outside air. So if I have a 40 degree temperature, I could easily have an evaporating temperature inside the coil of well below freezing. It could be 25, 28. So I could build ice mm, sometimes. It doesn't, it doesn't happen a lot, but depends on the humidity in the air. But uh, at 40 degrees, I could need defrost. And it's certainly, when I get to 35 or 30, I will need defrost. So, how do we accomplish defrost? And what does it do? The first part of this reversing of the cycle for defrost is this little doohickey here. Now this is a reversing valve. Uh, a real bugaboo for us for a long time. Uh, still are sometimes. This actually reverses the cycle, makes the inside coil, changes it from an evaporator to a condenser, and the outside coil from a condenser to an evaporator and vice versa. And it's a pilot operated uh, valve. I've got one showing disassembly one of these things and so on. Uh, and I'll see if I can uh, link it on this video. But this is a heart of what happens when you defrost. It also switches when you're just in cooling. Uh, if I go to cooling, this thing usually will energize and it will switch it to the cooling mode. Okay. So, when I defrost, I need to turn it back into an air conditioner. So, the reversing valve changes it from heat to cool, then shuts off the outdoor fan, because I don't want to keep blowing air across this thing. All I'm trying to do is concentrate heat in the coil. Then the coil gets warm, the refrigerant uh, is warm out there, because it's actually pulling heat from inside the house. Because the inside of the house is not an evaporator again. And so it's pulling heat from the inside of the house and putting it into the condenser outside and it's melting the ice. Okay, we need assorted sensors and the like uh, to determine when we should go into defrost because you don't want to go into defrost too often. It's a waste of energy. You're actually taking heat out of the house every time you go into defrost, but it's a necessary evil. So when you... Uh, when you design a defrost system, you set it up so that it will defrost as few times as possible and most effectively as possible. And I've got several videos on defrost systems and the like, and I'll probably link those here too. So, uh, the unit will go into defrost, outdoor fans off, heat's concentrated outside, once it's finished, then it switches back to heat and it goes back to the way it was working before. Okay, when it goes into defrost, that reversing valve reverses and the backup heat comes on. Okay, why do we turn on the backup heat? Because I turned this back into an air conditioner and I'm taking heat from inside, which means the duct temperature is going to reduce. Okay, customer sitting there in his chair, feels this air coming out, it's coming out at about 50, 55 degrees. 
He is not happy. He doesn't think his heat pump should be cooling his house down. But it is. While it's in defrost. Now, defrost, necessary evil. Okay. So what you do is when this thing goes into defrost, it turns on the backup heat. Backup heat comes on, tempers the air coming into the structure, so the customer has no idea it even went into defrost. Okay, that's a brief overview on defrost. There's lots more on it. Like I said, I'll link this stuff.